Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Wednesday, June 19th, 2024. And today is National Garfield the Cat Day. How many of you read that comic strip? I don't even know if it's still around. But anyway, Garfield, the comic strip Garfield, first launched in, in on June 19th, 1978. So it's been around for quite some time. So if you're a fan of Garfield the Cat, then celebrate because today is your day. If you're reading along in the book of Psalms with us, we're, today we're going to read Psalm 89 through 91. Psalm 89 through 91. And we're going to continue on our topic of change is a journey. And we're likening the fact of, of our relationship, our walk with the Lord, as that to the Israelites as they had exited out of slavery in Egypt. And today we're going to get into the book of Exodus here. Uh, we're going to look specifically at chapter 12. In verses 31 and 32. But one thing I want us to understand before we get into the scripture. Now we spent the last two days talking about taking off our old sinful life. And putting on the new man and the new things of God. And and we talked yesterday that you know that's not something that's going to happen overnight. You know it's something we're going to have to work for. And also part of the whole process of change changing our our lives comes with the pruning and the purging that we studied about that Jesus talked about in John chapter 15 and how we must remain in him and abide in him and we need to to do all that so that we can be set apart from this sinful world in John chapter 17 In verse 15, in his prayer, Jesus prayed that God would not remove us from this sinful world, but to keep us from evil. And you see, that's important because it would be so much easier in the Christian life if if at that moment of salvation, we can get to go home, to be with God, to be with Jesus. And while that would be so much easier because we wouldn't have to deal with the struggles and things that we deal with now Jesus prays that he keeps us from evil and the only way we can be kept from evil is to allow God to prune us and to purge us as we are putting on that that new person that God wants God was pulling Israel out of the slavery in Egypt and bringing them to a land that was their own, bringing them to the promised land. And God today is calling us out of our lifestyle of sin and guiding us as we go to our promised land, which is in heaven. And if you go into the book of Exodus, you know, like I I had said before, and I'm going to continue saying this because it's so important, change doesn't happen overnight. I mean, Moses didn't just walk into Pharaoh one day and say, hey, let my people go. I'm taking them out of Egypt, and, and you got to find yourselves a new meal ticket. you got to find yourselves a new slaves here. That's not what Moses did. In fact, it, it took quite a work on, on Moses' part through the working of God in his life to get these, these people out of Egypt. And in fact, he did this through signs and wonders in in chapter 7. He turned the Nile River into blood. God turned his staff into a snake. And that wasn't enough. And in chapters 8, 9, 10, and 11, God worked through plagues on Egypt. And that wasn't enough. And finally, he he does the, the Passover and the firstborns were killed there in Egypt. And in verse number 31 of Exodus chapter 12, we read, And he, talking about Pharaoh, 
called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from amongst my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. You see, that was finally enough. Egypt has had enough, and they they threw Israel out. And if we jump down here to verse number 36, And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of, of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. So Israel walked on out of there with everything they were going to need. And, you know, for us to get away from sin, that's something that's going to take some time, too. Just like it took many days, many months, maybe. I don't know how long of a period of time that Moses was, was appearing in front of Pharaoh before they were sent packing and sent out of there. But it took some time. And the reason it takes some time is because we are so ingrained in sin, and sin is so much part of our life that, I mean, you, you've heard the you've heard the the old saying that sin sin is an easy how did how did it say it? I knew it when I started talking. It, 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 trust me, it's not easy to overcome sin. It's not easy to get away from from our sin nature. And here in Romans chapter 6, in verse number 6, Paul says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. You see, the old man, the old person, the old one that was living in sin, that was chasing after the things the world chases after, that was living in sin, that was submitting to sin, that person is gone because that was crucified with Jesus. That's why Paul now says that we henceforth should not serve sin. Did you know that when you choose to serve sin, that's a choice that you make? It's a choice. I know we live in a world today that people don't want to accept responsibilities for their actions. But if we jump down to verse number 12, Paul says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Friends, sin is a choice. You're not going to escape sin when you keep submitting to it, when you keep yielding to it. Verse 14 says, Sin shall not have dominion over you. That means that sin controls you. That means that sin is the one in charge. And we need to get away from that if we want to start living for God I mean I, I keep telling people this and I keep reminding people of this that God didn't send Jesus and give up Jesus so that we can continue living in sin you know if you look at, at all the people that Jesus came in contact with a lot of times they were known by a new name because they were a new person you know, look at, at um, let's say, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Blind Bartimaeus. After his encounter with Jesus, he wasn't blind no more. And there's a lot of other examples. So if we want to escape sin, if we want to become the people that God wants us to be, which we're going to see that here in just a second, we got to get away from sin. We got to quit yielding to sin. We got to quit submitting to sin. And friends, that's hard. That's hard to do. I mean, just ask anybody that's tried to quit smoking or or quit drinking or you know, anytime you you deny yourself something that you're used to. 
that's a difficult undertaking but yet it's a change is necessary and that'll become easier as we allow God to prune and purge the things away from us that doesn't need to be there in Romans chapter 7 and I'm sure that you can relate to this too a lot of times we don't do the things we want to do we set out and have great ambitions saying I'm going to live for God I'm going to do this I'm going to do that but it never happens I remember there used to be a poster a little picture up um, by the time clock at a place that I had worked at in the years past and it showed it was a little cartoon and it said that today is a new day and I'm going to I'm going to be happy all day today and then there's there's a little break in the picture and then it, the person is there at work and they say but that's over now because I got to work now. You know that that's 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 life right there. We can't commit continue submitting to sin, even though that's not what we want to do. But yet that's the things that that we end up doing. Paul writes about this in Romans chapter seven, starting in verse number fifteen. He says, "For that which I do, I allow not." For what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. I'm going to stop right there because that's a confusing play on words what Paul was basically saying there is that the things that I want to do are the things that I don't do but the things that I don't want to do is the things that I end up doing then he says here in verse 18 that the will is present he wants to do the right things he wants to do the things of God but he ends up doing the things of the flesh instead doing the things that goes that that we've been freed from and finally here in 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 first peter chapter number two we see here that god has called us out just like he called israel out of the slavery there in egypt he's calling us us out of the sin nature and this fallen and sin world sin filled world to chase after the things of god and not chase after the things of the world He's called us out in Second First Peter chapter two, verses nine and ten. I love these verses. He says, "But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of God, or the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God." which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Awesome verses right there. What is that telling us? That God has called us out. We are chosen. We're a holy nation. We're a royal priesthood. Friends, I don't know where you are in your walk with the Lord today. But if God's pruning you, if God's purging you, then then follow through. Let him do the work he needs to do. And Father, I just pray that you go with us now, Lord. I thank you for this message, Lord. And I just pray that you help us to, to become the people that you want us to be, Lord. Help us, Father, to, to show your love to others, but also help us to show show you to a lost and a hurting world help us just like jesus prayed for his disciples lord that you wouldn't take them out of the world but that you would that 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 you would keep them from evil and i pray the same thing lord not to pull us out of this world but to help keep us from falling into sin And Father, I just pray that you go with each person that's listening to us now, Lord, and to bring us back at your next appointed time. For it's in Jesus' name I ask it. 
Amen. Remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you. Then share that Word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Decisions. Some decisions last five minutes. Yeah, I'll have a scoop of the vanilla. No, uh, chocolate. No, no, uh, vanilla. Some decisions last all night. Yeah, I'll have the all-you-can-eat tamale platter with lots of hot sauce. Some decisions last longer than we like. Suntan lotion? What for? Oh, that's for wimps. Some decisions last a lifetime. (coughs) Honey, honey, it's your turn. Honey, mommy be there in a second. (coughs) Honey, some decisions are eternal. Oh, sure, I've thought a lot about Jesus, but... Frankly, I'm not ready to give my life to God. And some decisions can't be made tomorrow. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. Where do you stand with him? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com.